Welcome to I Love Stocks, April 19th, 2020. We're passionate about trading and your financial success. We've got a list of seven today we're going to go through, and Miss Vegas is going to do a brief market update at the beginning of the video. So the tickers are going to be in or E N S V A R V P B A as in Boeing, General Electric, A M, Apple, and Lulu. And good morning, Miss Vegas. And good morning, everyone. Hopefully, you've been having a nice weekend. Today is Sunday, April the 19th. So, you know, everyone's obviously stuck at home. I mean, the only thing you can really do is just step out and get groceries, go to the pharmacy, go to a drive through or order takeout. Pretty much limited to what you can do. So, you know, the whole world is kind of like stuck at home. My mom was actually saying she feels like she's in jail. And I'm like, you don't really go out much. <laughs> so she still feels like she's in jail. Um, but I do want to mention this. So in the news this weekend, I mean, obviously, just a quick brief update. So the Canadian uh, border is going to stay closed for another month, so the U.S.-Canada border. And that's according to uh, Mr. Trudeau. And uh, we also see that um, Japan has 10,000 coronavirus cases days after declaring a state of emergency. So Japan's in a lot of trouble with their with the corona. Also, um, Amazon is now going to be using thermal cameras at warehouses to identify employees that could have potential coronavirus. And listen to this. Naaman Marcus is apparently filing for bankruptcy as soon as this week. This is circulating on social media. And last but not least, 24-hour um, fitness, for those of you that have a membership there. Um, and I've seen them all over. Um, they're also weighing bankruptcy because the coronavirus is pushing the fitness industry to a brink. I mean, all these gyms are closed. I mean, even my gym's closed. But funny enough, my gym is Planet Fitness. And by the way, publicly traded company and the stock's been moving really well. And I got an email from the company actually saying, we're not going to be deducting premiums for your membership, but this company has cash. So Planet Fitness, I don't think we'll be in that boat, but wow, pretty sad to hear and see how a lot of companies are going to be going bankrupt. And you know what? This is not going to be the first. I mean, you know, Jim's just showing me here the coronavirus cases. I mean, we have... In the U.S., 735,366 cases as of, you know, to this time of day right now, 1134 Eastern Standard Time. New York has the most, like 39,095. Like that is just so, like I think that's the total, is that the total number? How many deaths, Jim? Is that the total number of deaths in the U.S.? 39,000 in the U.S. New York has 13,157 deaths, but New York yeah. has the worst numbers, like a 596,532 people tested for the virus. So, you know, the virus is not gone, and obviously everyone's working for a cure. But anyways, it's still affecting many things okay people's lives are disrupted things like that but nevertheless you know when it comes to stocks sometimes a lot of these stocks are still making new highs so let's get over to this watch list um so you can see here we're going to talk about ensv okay so ensv is in servco and uh this company as you know it's in denver and uh, they actually are a provider of domestic onshore oil and gas industry. They kind of remind me a little bit of like TRNX, which had a nice run this week. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that one. We're going to talk about ENSV. So ENSV also has regained compliance. And their plan, they, they did like their, uh, their plan that they did present to the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, so that's good information. Um, they also did mention kind of a preliminary update regarding their financial results. They did mention that their first quarter revenue will be between 9.3 and 9.4 versus 24.8. So obviously the earnings will be lower. 
but the fact is this, I mean, they're still making good money, but it's obviously lower than previously. And that's with regards to um, the discontinuation of water transfer operations. And um, they also did mention that their EBITDA for the first quarter is going to decrease significantly compared to the prior years. So the president, Ian Dickinson, um, he did say that, you know, part of the reason they've had some weakness um, is because they have weakness in the domestic oil and the gas activity levels, which is also driven by lower commodity prices. And it is relating to uh, pricing pressures and also the concerns and the issues with the impact of the coronavirus. So um, they have taken meaningful action to right size the cost structure and to try to win additional market share. So he did mention that it's a little bit too early to kind of process the adjusted EBITDA information, um, but they did also enter into a 1.9 million promissory note with the Paycheck Protection Program. So you always hear on TV, uh, they talk PPP, and then people are like, what is PPP? So PPP is Paycheck Protection Program. And this is part of the CARES Act, which, by the way, was enacted recently on March 27, 2020. So, Jim, let's hear about this ENSV because it's had a beautiful move. Yeah. And a lot of people that love penny stocks are definitely in this trade and they're definitely buying and they're definitely holding this. So let's hear about your thoughts on this chart and what are the next resistance levels because it does have um, support at the 50 day and the 20 day moving average. It's also kind of like in a new uptrend and it did have a volume surge as well. So let's hear your thoughts on this because I'm sure a ton of people are in this and swinging it. Yep. I've seen some notes where people think that we are kind of at the bottoms on some a lot of these penny energy stocks and that's you can tell by the result of what happened on friday we have had a year high up here of 72 cents and when you uh when you're trading pennies you got to think pennies you you don't think dollars so you know when a thing bounces up 10 percent 10 cents or something that's maybe a time to execute profit taking or at least cutting down in shares but we did have a low of 748. So let's pull up the 20 day, take a good look at it. I think it has um, resistance levels up here right around this 2497 area. You see where we've kind of triple topped right there and it failed. And then we had some congestion right here with a long of 2806 on the yearly chart. And you have a huge gap to start filling up after that. Because that hard resistance is going to be right there at 25 cents. We're going to pull up the 20 day and look at it and see if that tells us the same story. Yeah, right up around that 25. So we've got to find a support level. And I found it here at 1666. And actually, if you pull it up on a 20 day chart, it's almost a 50% retracement from the, the high that we did have Friday. So evidently, that, that's a pretty good little spot. You see where we touched here about three weeks ago at 1661. So I'd consider that a very low support. I'm going to add another trend line right in here where we had this uh, base of these candles kind of come down. That'll be your second support. Let's pull up the 33 day or the three minute. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a couple support levels. I'm going to add another one right here. And that's right there on the daily three minute right there off that 200 EMA at 1786 so I got it set at 18 cents so that's your second support your first one's right here at the eight at 19 cent area and then that that third one that needs to hold is going to be right at 17 cents if it doesn't hold you'll be a strong buy down here right around between the 12 and the 15 uh, mark area so that's what I'd be looking for we are setting up in the sending triangle too so it could be setting up to break resistance right here at the 20, 21, or right around the 22 cent area. So that's going to be your hard resistance to break. I think it can. You can see the ascending triangle set up with a long of right around 25. And that's ENSV. The next one we're going to talk about is RVP. You know what? Yeah. I really like this company, Retractable. So 
I got to tell you guys a quick story about this. Um, this company back in 1989, you know, the founder, Thomas J. Shaw, uh, Shaw, he was watching TV and there was a doctor who actually had got HIV from an accidental needle stick injury. So the founder, Thomas J. Shaw, he was a mechanical structural engineer and he was really surprised about what happened with that doctor that got HIV from an accidental needle stick injury. Can you believe it? Like that would be horrifying news. So he was very compelled to try to do something about this. So he spent a year developing preliminary designs and some concepts about how he could make a better um, needle. And then he was granted, um, I guess, uh, funds to commercialize the production uh, of the retractable syringe designs. And uh, this is how the company started. So what an amazing story. Uh, so you can see here that the company has all kinds of products um they have the retract they call it the rvp because retractable technologies they have the most quality user-friendly safety device on the market and uh basically they have a video if you ever want to watch how the product actually works but they these needles are like phenomenal i mean the needle is automatically retracted directly um back into the syringe once it's injected and fully depressed. So the pre-removal retraction basically eliminates the exposure of the contaminated needle, which reduces the risk of what they call needle stick injury. It's a very safe product and a single-handed activation. So this is very popular in the healthcare industry. And they have a lot of like um, their needle stick retractable goes into like a safety chamber and it stays in the safety chamber until obviously it goes through a safe disposal. Uh, but this is just amazing. I'm going to have to check next time I get some blood work done. I'm going to have to ask them if they use this product called RVP retractable. So I wanted to mention this stock and Jim will talk about the chart in just a moment, but it definitely looks like it's under the radar. It had a very nice uh, parabolic rise which is basically there was a bit of a sharp rally and the definitely you could see the stock had a pullback, but regardless of the pullback, the stock is still on a 52 week high and it's definitely overbought. So when you see something like this, you should be watching the stock because it looks to me that it's still on a very strong uptrend and it looks like it definitely wants to have a continuation. So let's hear what Jim's going to tell us about this chart because for those of you that like to swing trade, this to me is a great setup. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Jim, over to you on this beautiful chart. Yep. I'm going to pull up the yearly chart right here. As you see, we're also at a three-year high. But here we are at a yearly high out on, uh, look, it might have been, been Friday, but we hit a 345 high. And we did close down here at 294. So I just pulled up this yearly to try to find me some trend lines and some support levels that we could maybe go off of. And let me see right there, 226. So we're going to pull up the 20 day right now. This is a TTM trend chart setup with my moving averages of the 200, the 100, the 34, and the 50, along with the Fibonacci auto uh, setup for each day. So, you know, I would think on a 20 day breakout, I would start looking at a retracement of right around 50%. And that's right where this support level is off that yearly chart. So I'm going to call that a very low support if it does decide to pull back to 237 that would be a very strong buy i mean very strong and it can i mean we did pull back pretty good here on that breakout we did have on friday right into this little channel where we had a pennant flag set that pennant flag right there talk about them a lot um you can see it right here and then we had that big breakout but it looks prettier when you when it's not so magnified there we go. See that right there? Then that's what happened on Thursday. And then that pennant flag went ahead and broke up, created a high, and then she pulled back about the top of that resistance level. So that's going to be your first channel of support. And then we had these three white soldiers right here. And this is on the hour chart before the pennant flag came into effect. Usually when you have three white soldiers, they'll pull back and then you'll it'll find an equilibrium. And this one created a flag, which is more than beautiful, and had that resist and had that breakout on that engulfing candle. So we're going to.
go to the bottom of this last flag right here at 268 and we're going to do the same thing right here and then you had another breakout off this so beautiful three white soldiers that turned into a pennant flag that gave a great uh, swing play setup for the next day and of course you'd want to take profit but low support's going to be right down here right around the 250 area I hate to see it going any lower than that or it'd be in this buy zone between 226 and 237 you have your first and second support right here at 268 and then 280 and then with resistance to break is going to be right up here right around the 313 area between 307 306 and 313 you see what i'm saying by that candle right there to a long of right around 344 with a hard resistance and that's rvp and that was a very good explanation of the three white soldiers and a continuation of a pennant flag set up for a swing trade. The next one is Boeing. Boeing was a beautiful thing to wake up to Friday. Miss Vegas. Oh my gosh, we killed Boeing on the swing trade on Thursday into Friday. We had made a killing. Um, so congrats to a lot of Boeing traders. And if you follow us on social media, which I know that many people do, um, I got messages from people on social media that thanked me for posting the Boeing trade because they banked a lot of money. So congrats to the Boeing traders. So Boeing, as you know, had a nice run on Friday. And uh, part of that reason was because, you know, they mentioned that uh, they're going to reopen their commercial production plant starting tomorrow, okay, which is the 20th. And um, they also did mention that they're going to resume working towards restarting the production of the 737 MAX. Um, and the other thing too, you know, Treasury has earmarked $17 billion for Boeing and other firms, which is critical to the national security because as you guys know, the military relies heavily on Boeing. And um, I mean, they make all their jets. So um, talk about how we can't let a company like Boeing fall apart that is not going to happen because of how important they are to national security of the united states of america uh the other thing too is that you know boeing's lost a lot of orders like they lost like 69 more orders for the troubled 737 max airplane um they also mentioned that they had another order where customers had canceled 150 max plane orders which is kind of deepening the crisis because of the coronavirus, um, you know, situation that is affecting the travel industry. But nevertheless, Boeing is definitely not going to be, it's not one of those companies that you'll never see again and that they're going to let fall apart. They're too important to the travel industry. All the companies that have an airline like American Airlines, Delta, they all have Boeing aircraft. And you can't just shut Boeing down because then how are they going to have the parts for those jets? So Boeing is too, too important to the travel sector. So we probably will see more news on Boeing as things evolve. But definitely, like I mentioned, they're so critical to national security and that the Treasury has uh, earmarked $17 billion for Boeing. Now, Boeing does not want federal money. Uh, so this will be really interesting. How does this play out for Boeing? Um, so Jim, let's hear about Boeing because a lot of people did really well. They swing traded it. They took their profits. Some people took new contracts for next week. Some people have the actual stock. Where can we see Boeing? Because it's had, it's a nice run. And can we see a continuation come this week? I think now, we earnings are not coming due just yet. Um, but, um, let's hear your thoughts on the chart. Well, we were definitely lucky enough to get in on the double bottom of this on Thursday. And we were, there was reasons behind the trade why we got in the trade. One was the dark pool. And another one was that we hit this double bottom here on the technical side of it. So you had um, the money flow coming into it at a bottom down here. And I was talking to Vegas, you know, watching until I was watching it most of the day. And then we started consolidating down there on Thursday right down right down in this area and then I got into the trade right at my support level and it dipped a little bit more on us and then right after into to after right into close 
the news came out that they were going to open up that plant, which really was a great, great thing to wake up to the next morning. And so we're going to pull up this yearly chart. I mean, I was really excited. It's probably one of my favorite trades of the year. Well, I had a few of them last week. Disney was one and Roku was another that uh, both popped up on great news. So we're, I'm thinking we're in a 20-day channel right now. As I pull up this 20-day chart, I'll pull up the yearly. And you see how, how it just kind of just sold off, and it had to. I'm surprised it didn't tank faster than that with all the bad news that it has been getting, coming along with a new CEO and then him getting handed all this corona mess. So, you know, it's a pretty tough job. But we're setting up in a pennant flag, as I can see on the daily chart on the year, with that low up here, down here at 89. Whoever got in it down there, yabba dabba do. We do have a resistance level on the last retracement that we did have and we're about we're more than 50 percent above that retracement on the yearly chart so i'm going to put that 180.41 in there and then there's going to be another one right here magnify this up see how look how perfect that was that top line right there i mean you got to have good eyes so we're going to bring this thing up just a little bit right there okay now we're going to pull this up to the 20 day we're going to call this trade out I do love this thing getting back up to 180, but we've got to break this hard resistance at 163.83. So that's our next extended target. And then that next resistance is at 157.82. So we are setting up also Friday with an ascending triangle into close, into, into hour, after hours. And we have had that double bottom. That was a beautiful play off that double bottom trade that we got in Thursday. So the resistance to break, and there, that's going to be your low support. Your second one's going to be right down here at 141, and then that first one right here at 147.35. The hard resistance to break is going to be at 157.82, and if we can get to a double top breakout at 163, uh, it's all play money after that. And, you know, it's when you really got to batten down and put your finger on the trigger. I did get into an option for a whole month out, just got one, but I, it's an experiment because I went so far out. Usually I scalp them within a couple of weeks, but we'll see how it goes. And that was at the $200 strike. Miss Vegas, the next one we're going to talk about is GE. Oh, well, you know, we're talking about Boeing. So I just wanted to throw GE in here because, you know, GE also is very involved with these aircrafts with Boeing. Um, they do a lot of the other components uh, within the aircraft as well. So they're also part of the uh, critical national security. So they do have a lot of things that they collaborate on together when they're making a lot of these aircrafts. Now, the interesting thing with GE is it did have a pocket pivot, but I do want to mention that there is some money flow going in on the GE actual stock. And Jim could show you that this is, um, you know, where the money is going in. This is actually shares that are being bought on GE. And a lot of people um, are swinging trading in our room. I can tell you we are swing trading GE. Um, this was given out by the Longhorn. So we have the GE May 15 expiry, the $6 calls. And we paid for those at $106 for one contract. So Longhorn was noticing that something's going on with GE and he's actually right because I was looking into it a little further myself and I've been, we've been watching GE to be honest for quite some time. We keep seeing a lot of buying in GE and a lot of sweepers and um, there is, they have a large open interest as well on these contracts so if you like to trade options you should be checking it out one of the other ones though that i have to say that we're um that we also looked at at the end of march we actually traded ge we still have this we trading the 12 dollars calls for august 21st and those expire as i said on the 21st the 12 dollars calls now those ones there i have to look at them because I have to, I have to open up my dashboard here, but those ones we took at twenty six, so twenty six dollars. So, you know, if you have a small account, you really want to look at something further out, 
because you want to take advantage of so that you don't have to stress about the trade and $26 is really not a big investment and you know you could actually significantly if there's something that's happening with GE now let me just double check though to, uh, what those are closing for option contracts it was the 12 the August 21st $12 calls so those have kind of decayed for a lot of you those were $26 back at the end of March and because the stock has pulled back that particular is currently trading at nine dollars for a twelve dollar call i gotta tell you that's a bargain for a ge and for an august close so i'll be definitely definitely looking at that um so definitely for those of you that like to trade options and uh i want to just tell you quickly sorry just the open interest if i can just one second um and then i'll turn it over to jim but something is going on with ge i have to say something's going on so in 12 dollar strike there is a hundred and twenty eight thousand seven hundred and seventy seven on that strike for august 21. so there's a, so much open interest on ge i'm definitely going to be looking at that strike even looking to pick up maybe the ones for $11 because those are going for 16 cents or maybe the $10 ones. They're so cheap. They're 20 much. So I'm definitely going to be sharing this on social media. So if you don't follow, follow so that you can get notified when I look. Um, Cause I'll be checking them out tomorrow. So Jim, let's hear about GE cause something's ha happening there. I just, it's just it's very unusual flow. A lot of sweep. So tell us what you see on this chart. Yep, we uh, we definitely got into a double bottom with a higher low right here. And I'm, you know how much of it's tanked here in the past year. So I, I wanna go ahead and just show it to you real fast. We were at a $13 high up here and then she sank down to 590. They did have a $5 target on GE. And we're gonna go ahead and pull up this $20, 20 day chart. So I'm kind of liking it. We did hit a low of six bucks on that 20 day and we're kind of up here in a, in a I'd say in a pivot point area and that's going to be between that 678 and seven dollars. So if we can break past that, that's going to be your resistance level to break that seven dollars. If we can break that, we can bring it up here to these two higher lows. You also can see how that how it's kind of just sank down here. Now, let me go ahead and finish this on out. Right about there. So that 720 is going to be a real strong resistance to get to. If we can get past that, we can climb up to these other new highs. But it is, I guess, kind of figuring out what it wants to do. We did have a double bottom with a higher low, which is giving me a little bit of bullish sediment. So resistance to break 7, 720, and then maybe up here to the 739. Anything past that will be a gift. That's when you really want to start taking a good look at it. And then a low support level of right around this 635 area to 645. And then that first support right at 663. And that's GE. The next one we're going to talk about is AM. AM, Miss Vegas. AM. Yep. Me, I have not traded AM. And Jim brought this one to my attention. This is Antero Midstream Partners <clears throat> on AM. This has a really, really nice chart. This is one that I actually like for a swing trade. It could move on a day trade, but I like it gives you the chance to let that stock consolidate and then continue. I mean, the float is really big on this one here, but this also, they're in the oil and gas. CRNX, and we also talked about ENSV. So Antero Midstream, you know, they're in the similar industry and, um, we are in Denver, Colorado, and uh, they also do a lot of things in that sector. So it was formed uh, the Ontario Resources back in 2012. And um, 
that's all I can tell you. I mean, there's, you know, and gas. I mean, you know, it's quite a hot commodity lately. Um, we know that there's a lot of issues with the number the oil production. So definitely watch this one because it does have a beautiful setup. I mean, it's got a nice pocket pivot part of the 50 day. I mean, this to me is a beautiful chart for a swing trade and the earnings are not this week. As far as I can see, it's the week. So I do like it for a swing trade for this week, Jim. Um, so what are your thoughts on this chart? Cause you spotted this beautiful chart. Oh yeah. Let's look at the yearly chart right now. This is an energy play, and like I said, I'm hearing rumor that we could have hit a bottom, and some of these are going to be good for bounces up. We do have a little spot right here where there's a resistance level of $4.40. I'm going to go ahead and draw that in there on that yearly chart, smack, right there at four forty. Then you got another one right around here, right around the 3 buck area, right around the $4 area. And then another one right here at... Right here, bam. Okay, let's pull this back up. 20 day, got a support level right here, and another one right here. Have a nice little sending triangle breakout right here, but it did pull back, and then finally had that huge breakout on last Wednesday. So this is definitely a momentum play. Um, we did have kind of a lower high which I do have a little concern with. So we could pull back to these other support levels and have another little bounce of gravity is what I call it. You know, where the ball bounces up and then you have that big bounce and then it comes down and you have a smaller one, then you have a smaller one. And so I'm thinking maybe that 330 is going to be a good solid support for the first one. And if we can get down into this lower channel right around between 295 and 305, we could have a retracement back up back up to the resistance level of 330 to right where it closed at at 352 and there's another one right around here that would have to be kind of a, a power play right there but I think if it pulls back at 338 will be your spot so let's go this over I do see a little pullback coming out on this stock maybe right around that 295 to 305 for a strong buy then at second support level is right down here, right around 317, with that 330 is your first, and the resistance to break at 352, up to 463, and then we pull up that yearly chart to try to find other resistance levels, and that gets up to around what 440, right in that area, and that's where about I would say the hard resistance going to be. The pivot point on the yearly chart is all the way up here at 676. If it does decide to have a nice breakout for a long trade but with right now we're in an energy crisis so i just see it probably hitting that first resistance i said there right around the 440. and the next one we're going to talk about if it gets up to that that stage that would be a pretty hard resistance and the next one we're going to talk about is apple miss vegas you there i didn't hear you apple Apple? Yep. Jim? Yep, Apple. Okay, I couldn't hear you for a sec. You can hear me Talk now, right? Apple, because yeah. Apple has a new phone called the SE. And uh, I was checking it out the other day online. And uh, it's going to be much cheaper and has all the good features that Apple lovers want on their phone. So, funny enough, I had a downgrade. From Goldman Sachs, they said Apple is a sell. Get rid of Apple. You know, I just trust all these analysts because Apple to me um, is one to definitely still watch. I mean, look where it closed here. Let me just see here for one second on Apple because I was looking at the phone for a sec. But you know, Apple closed at 282. And you know what? This is still an interesting setup. I really, you know, the earnings are not due just yet. Um, and we have supported on Apple. But I just want to talk about this new phone uh, just for one second. Um, 
this is their new SE phone and um, you order it online and um, what they're saying about this phone is that still a lot of privacy is built into the phone and you know you can have you don't have to spend as much as a lot of their other phones now these phones are starting around six hundred dollars and there's saying the um, the right size so you'd be happy with the size and that it has also durable glass aluminum design it's brilliant bright 4.7 inch um, HD display and um, you know I guess for the money for the iPhone 11 Pro um, they're saying what they did is that they took the brains <laughs> I'm quoting what Apple said they took the my phone 11 pro and they put it into this iphone se and they're saying that this is the fastest chip ever in a smartphone thing will feel very fluid so when you're launching your apps or playing the games on your phone it's basically going to be super super fast they're also saying that um you the camera is going to be really strong the, the camera that's on this phone is pretty good so there's going to be a lot of and a lot of high definition videos can be done with this. You'll see apparently four times more detail than in a 1080p HD. I have a 4K video. This is just amazing. So I really think there's going to be a huge demand for this, especially because the price is at least looks to me like how the iPhone 11s were. So don't be shocked that Apple, in my opinion, even though Goldman Sachs said it's a sell closed really strong apple to me is bullish so be quiet goldman sachs jim what are your thoughts on apple i like apple and i'm going to pull up the apple chart right now i like apple um i like apple but i also understand when goldman sachs comes out that it's going to be a trend of the day is going to be red but it, if it gets down to that 233 area that they're they talked about that'll going to be a strong buy if it does but i think we're bullish on apple and i'm looking at the yearly chart right here you can see it did have tank with everything else and it did bounce back pretty strong here in the last couple of weeks these are daily charts right up in here so the past one two three four which had a pretty good run for the past couple of weeks so i've got some support levels and i got some resistance levels and we're going to pull up the 20 day the support level is no lower than this 270 that's going to be where we had that ascending triangle breakout right here that I talked about previous in uh, to the room when we had that ascending triangle breakout so did Apple itself and then we had that pullback come back on the Goldman Sachs news on Friday and I always say that the market has a short attention span and it'll forget about that news this week and it'll probably start bouncing back up but low support right around that 270 the second one right around 274.82, and that first one no lower than 278.06, and that could be your double entry buy for the channel that it's starting to create above this resistance level of 270. If it does dip down there, that's going to be a strong buy. If it breaks resistance level of 288.95, we can get back up to these new highs. But right now, it's going to build a channel and until I see another ascending triangle breakout like this where the stock's actually performing at higher lows and then you could have that resistance. So the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the last one and that's going to be Lulu. Lululemon. Yep. Well, I love Lululemon. Who doesn't? If you don't own Lululemon clothing, you uh, try them out because I gotta tell you, once you try on some Lulus or any of their products, and I can say this because I have a lot of Lululemon clothing, you don't even want to like come out of it. It's just so super comfortable and it's just an amazing comfort that you just want to wear it all day. So Lululemon, if you guys notice, I mean, what a beautiful price point it was at back in March. I mean, that pricing and there was tons and tons of buying back then i guarantee long-term holders that sold back in february around the 260 range those shares in mid-march when the pullback happened 
and look where Lulu has totally reversed completely on a dollars a share since March, mid March. Um, so Lulu Lemon has a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weekly chart. It's definitely bullish. It's got a beautiful pocket pivot and it looks like it definitely wants to keep expanding. It's here that their CFO uh, left the company, but nobody cares. What? Who cares if he left? Maybe he was let go. Uh, good job. We don't know. But there's no details why the CFO left. Um, but nevertheless, Lululemon is still very well and um people are buying probably online and uh you know what no one's gonna stop the product i mean if you're a lover of this product you're not gonna stop buying lulu so this company is going nowhere but up so jim all right by the way howard linston from stock twits loves lululemon and like he wears them all the time Howard, who loves Lulu, and Jim, maybe you should send him a Lulu chart later on. That's a great endorsement. So uh, let's hear your thoughts on Lulu. Well, we did have a high up here of right around 266.20 with a low of 128.80. So it had more than 100% retracement, which is beautiful on that last sell-off that we had. And this is one that ain't going to be affected that much with economics, more so because people are going to keep buying their Lulus no matter what. Um, so let's pull up the 20 day. The 50% retracement was right around here. And that's where we had that last bounce last week, right? Just under around 200 bucks. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. And I see this little sending triangle right here. Here's another, you know, option, higher lows with, and actually we kind of started having some higher highs there too on this sending triangle and that resistance level was right around the 202 area which is now going to become a support so we have two choices it's either going to pull back to this lower chamber right around the 214.30 it might be overpriced maybe for right now or it can go ahead and break resistance level of 227 or this this high that it did have here at 226.44 and get back up here to the long resistance of 231.75 this is going to be an interesting one to watch come next week um, but look you know it's it's definitely bounced back up pretty good low support no lower than the 214 that'll be a strong buy with the resistance to break at the 227 up to the one 231 60 something 231 60 or 237 231 yeah 75 area I'd say right around in there but that's just a beautiful chart on Lulu. And that's it for the market report. Always remember, subscribe and ring that bell for future updates and hit that like button. And Miss Vegas, would you like to continue with the close? Well, said at the end there. Yep. Are you there? Or what did you say at the end there? Are you cut out? Oh, I say, are you ready for the close? We're done. We're ready for the close? Yeah, we're done. I'm ready for the open tomorrow morning. All so, right. Um, you know what, guys? Guys, um, take some notes of the comments made in this video. And um, hope if those of you that didn't get a chance to watch Jim's video yesterday on chart supports resistances, we have that on the channel here as well. And uh, for those of you that have been enjoying the free trials we've been on for over a year, uh, that's great. We hope uh, you've learned and grown, and we've had many people join the trials and then join and become a client. Coming back um, as well when they take a break from trading. So uh, we are going to stop offering the free trial as of midnight. Are interested in coming to the room and checking it out uh, please do that today is the last day of the free trial we've been doing this for over a year offering free trials and we're going to eliminate and limit it because we want to be able to only offer it on promotional basis and if you really want to come to the room 
try to sign up tonight. I mean, a lot of people are stuck at home. Now's a great time to learn about trading and try to grow your account. I had a phenomenal uh, room. She joined with $500 back on March 26. And uh, she messaged and said that she's really been trading options, but just swing trading options. She's not, she's new. So she doesn't like to be day trading because it's too much and too stressful so she likes the option swing trades and now her account from march 26 up to april 17 500 dollars that is just an amazing return if you go on our social media i post some of the comments people have been saying of how um, i mean sempre finance has never traded options by the way um he's been always trading stocks and he's been doing so good i think he cleared like thousand this week on options so it's a great opportunity to join us and um hopefully you will and just continue following us on social media and on the videos and we will be offering future trials down the road but on a limited basis so so come on in and uh, check us out link in the bio link in the youtube and uh, nothing to lose i mean you are investing time this is time for yourself you i mean the room is not just here's this trade here's a trade here's a trade we really do try to talk about what's happening the news the market um what's happening flow i mean all these different things are all things that you would not know about if you were not in the room so i can't put all that information on social media it's just so time can it's in the room listening you get all that information in real time which does make a difference in your trading and it helps with you becoming a more educated trader and that's really what it's about learning you want to learn all the time and believe me we're learning all the time too so i hope you guys have a good weekend and jim anything else to add nope that, that's about it so this is i love stocks and everybody have a great week next week and i love stocks